Hey everyone, it's your boy Kyle, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I do video content on movies, video games, and entertainment. And the overall goal of this channel is to give your daily dose of positivity, make you happy, make you smile, and brighten up your day. So yeah, we just finished off the Harry Potter series. It was so, so good. I really, really enjoyed it. I also really enjoyed reading all your lovely comments. I sincerely appreciate you taking the time to leave a comment on my video. It really means a lot to me. Um, but yeah, since we wrapped up the Harry Potter series, I figured let's do something fun. Um, so right now I'm um, kind of sharing my screen with you and I'm going to be doing like a movie tier list of giving you my personal opinions and how I viewed the movie. As well as I'll be taking um, some Pottermore quizzes. So we'll be doing uh, discovering my house, um, by discovering my wand, and as well as my Patronus animal. And I'm super, super excited. But before we get started this video, I'll just let you know this video is for entertainment purposes only. And that if you would like to watch my uh, full length content or get early access to my content or get priority in deciding what I'll be watching next on my YouTube channel, you can pop it over to my Patreon. I would love to have you. Um, and I'm super, super excited. And before I forget, I did read everyone's comments about, you know, uh, watching uh, Fantastic Beasts and they are coming. Do not worry, I work pretty quickly. <laughs> um, without a further ado, let's get right into this video. Okay, so right now with this tier list uh, maker, so S tier would be the top ranked, um, uh, like my absolute best films, and then D is obviously the worst, worst favorite. And I kind of went ahead and, and sorted these out. Um, based on the movies because they were kind of um, not ranged in the right order. Um, and so the first one that I'm going to be ranking is um, Sorcerer's Stone. Okay. So what does Kyle think about Sorcerer's Stone? I absolutely loved it. I think it gets an S tier. Um, the reason why I think it's an S tier is because it really got um, me uh, when it first came out, a lot of viewers really interested in the Harry Potter world, um, especially people who didn't, uh, you know, read the books um, and didn't know what Harry Potter was. Um, some people, you know, they probably watched the film and then they read the book. And then there's the opposite of people who already read the book and then they watched the film. Um, and so there was two different like variations of how people went about their Harry Potter um, uh, like um, world and how they discovered it and how they fell in love with it. Um, but I assume most people, maybe they started off with reading the book and then they watched the films. But you know, there's other people um, that didn't hear about it until the film came out and then they watched the first trailer and like, oh my goodness, I need to go watch it. Um, I just liked how funny it was, uh, very comedic, like Ron was so funny, hilarious. Um, it was just an overall like, like fun, feely kind of movie, like very comforting. I found, um, I liked how, you know, they weren't like a really good wizards at the time. They, they were just young and they're discovering things and it just felt like we were there with them on discovering, uh, things about Hogwarts, like, you know, like the moving staircases in, in, uh, uh, in Hogwarts and, you know, those, uh, you know, the long grand entrance uh, to the Great Hall with all the feasts um, and, uh, you know, being put into their houses and people they haven't met before, sorry. And, uh, like, it was just like a, a nice feel to it. And I know that I read your comments saying that they paid really, really close attention um, to the book and they did, a, they included a lot of things that happened in the book in the movie. And I think that is will make sense because one, this is the very beginning uh, film. And so if they want to make a really great impression on the audience from like people that have read the book as well as people who have never heard it before and bring them together, they have to include a lot of the story in the book to satisfy people that have read the book and make a good, like a wholesome story um, that people that have never heard of Harry Potter before uh, until then, um, they would really enjoy it and they would really invest um, their time um, into the Harry Potter films. And so I, it was just really well done. I uh, liked the characters. Um, 
and all that fun stuff. Um, but yeah, that's just my little rant on uh, uh, the Sorcerer's Stone. So next we're going to do is uh, Chamber of Secrets. Okay. How does Kyle feel about the Chamber of Secrets? Um, I think that I'm going to give it like, uh, like a C. Um, the reason why I gave it a C is not because I didn't, didn't enjoy it. Um, I, like, I liked how, so how funny it was. Like, Ron was hilarious. And when, they, when he was driving his parents' flying car and didn't notice the Hogwarts Express was behind him and screaming and, um, the crash into the Whomping Willow. I, um, I just thought, like, you know, um the bassless stuff and like um i don't know it, it didn't like super appeal to me like compared to like the rest of the, the other films did um i like i didn't it felt weird to like um you know discover you know tom riddle's diary and then like tom's it almost felt like tom was kind of there but not there it was like a, a past memory that he and uh, put in is like the dark ma magic and like how this guy how not this guy but Tom Riddle like you know um uh you know took over and you know um put a curse over um Ginny and so she wasn't realizing what she was doing and you know opening up the chamber of secrets and I don't know I just kind of was like meh and then I obviously did not like the spider scene at all with Aragog that was disgusting. I did not like that. I do not like spiders. It was like, oh, get me out of here. Like, I just didn't like it. I did not like that scene at all. It was um, scary, <laughs> to be honest with you. Those, those ginormous spiders. I was like, holy crap, this is gross. Get me out of here. And then I also didn't like, you know, like, with well, the bass was, um, and then he petrifying people, and then like, um, Harry always ended up being at the scene and then him and then Harry having to explain himself and like um, and defend himself and he's like no I swear it's not me and and like they're like well I don't know it might be you <laughs> and it's like we clearly know it's not him he barely knows any magic you know um, even though he's Harry Potter <laughs> and um, I liked how we got to see Dobby but, you know, Lucius Malfoy, uh, one of the characters I d don't really like, uh, you know, kicking Dobby, I was like, <gasps> don't, he's like, like, he's like the cutest house elf, and then that scene, and then when Harry gave him his sock, and he's a free elf, and I was like, oh, that, that touched me, but uh, other than that, like, I was like, mm, like, I'm not, like, super wasn't really super into it compared to the others. Like, uh, I still think it was good, but out of all of them, I'm giving it a C. Um, so next we have is Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, I'm gonna give it a B. And the reason why I'm giving it a B is because, I don't know, I kind of felt like the, the time travel kind of being kind of silly and uh, when I think about it. And that time traveling, like, magic wasn't really used, like, at all in the rest of the films and I would kind of consider it kind of overpowered because they could just travel back in time to solve their problems again and so um, I can see maybe why JK Rowling didn't want to use it afterwards because then it kind of just felt like I, the word I'm thinking about maybe it's not the right term but it kind of felt like maybe like a scapegoat of like oh we ran into this problem but let's go back in time and <laughs> and reverse everything and I just kind of like oh, okay whatever and then the uh, Dementors um, were frightful um, I mean they're meant to be scary um, not as scary as spiders but um, and also you know um, I mean we got to know a little bit about more of the insight with you know Harry's parents and um, with Peter Pettigrew and that the the whole time you know Sirius Black Harry's godfather was in uh, Azkaban was the same amount of time Ron owned that rat which was Peter Pettigrew because he transfigured himself into it um and uh and so like and he was kind of really creepy and he looked like he smelled really bad <laughs> I don't know um wasn't a fan of him 
Um, and then, you know, uh, Snape coming in and, uh, you know, doing his thing. But then, you know, in the end, we kind of knew that he was kind of always protecting Harry. So, but at the time of the film, uh, it was kind of annoying. And, um, yeah, the whole, the whole thing. And then with Sirius Black, you know, painted as this, like, criminal and this killer. Meanwhile, you know, he wasn't... <laughs> And so having to prove that is kind of really annoying. Um, but uh, also the cool, another cool scene was when Harry ran away from the Dudley family. He's like, can't stand this. And I was like, yo, I'm with you. I cannot stand them either. And then that night bus picks him up. And that night bus was super cool. And that scene was like really funny and really well done. Um, oh, and I also liked um, the hippogriff. Uh, was really cool. Uh, Buckbeak, he was awesome. Uh, super interesting. Um, and then Lucius Malfoy was trying to order it to get killed because it almost killed Malfoy, even though it was, you know, Draco Malfoy's fault for approaching uh, Buckbeak. But, you know, uh, Malfoy always want to stir uh, stuff up. Um, okay, so now we have um, Goblet of Fire. I'm gonna say it is an S tier. Um, reason why? It was so epic from start to finish. Um, we had those the two different schools that came together, and um, you know it was just the the story was so good, and um, you know, and also they put like breadcrumbs into like giving the audience like the indication that like. Yeah, it was Crouch Jr.'s um, that put Harry's name into the Goblet of Fire and, and used the, a strong confungus um, charm on the Goblet of Fire to put his name in. And he was saying that while he was polyjuiced, potioned into um, Mad-Eye Moody. And the fact that the professors didn't even pick that up, I was like, okay, like... Uh, when, when he said that, I was like, there's something fishy about this. And he almost gave himself away at that scene. Um, I liked how there was three different events. And, you know, the dragon one was pretty cool with, um, you know, him, you know, you know, flying around the castle and the castle being destroyed. And, um, uh, but then he succeeded with the egg. And then the underwater scene was, like, pretty cool. But not as, the event wasn't as good as, um... The dragon scene and then we had the tournament uh sorry not the tournament the the third one when they're in the um the for not the forest the the um, the maze and like every time that like they moved like someone got eliminated it was like the storm that like um moved in and obviously it was um manipulated to move people towards the cup but then there stuff was moving in there and people were changing but then the thing is is that I'm not sure if the hit, the the maze actually changed people or it was like Mad Eye Moody, you know, uh, doing stuff. Um, Mad Eye Moody doing stuff because he bewitched um, uh, Victor Crumb, and then you know um, he kind of attacked uh, Fleur, I believe. But there was some the, the maybe like the maze did some like a number to someone, but I didn't think it was as cool as. You know the first the first event was a lot lot better, um, but it was crazy that the whole tournament was set up to to you know um, lead him into the graveyard, which was the beginning of the, the movie where we saw Nagi go into the house and stuff, um, and um, it was crazy that Peter Buttercrew had like this vessel. I'm calling it a vessel of um, many like Voldemort, and then he needed. Uh, at Harry's blood, and then he chopped up his own arm to, um, and then, uh, uh, got a bone from his father, and then he resurrected him, in a sense. I'm calling it resurrection, but it was probably some, a different name for it. Um, and he got Harry's blood, so then he would still be able to do damage to Harry, because, um, with Lily's, um, uh, magic, and with the love that he, that she gave, um, to Harry as like the old magic, Voldemort couldn't do anything, and that's why in Sorcerer's Stone he couldn't touch Harry without you know melting and feeling hurt. 
um, which was super crazy. But then the um, another sad part was Cedric Diggory dying. Um, but the thing is, is that we never really, you know, got to know Cedric Diggory as a character in the film. Like, it almost, it was, like, weird because at the beginning it sounded like they were, like, friends with the Weasleys because they went together for the Wizarding uh, World Tournament. And then, like, they're in school and then they're competing and then he doesn't, like, appear to not like Harry as much. Not because, like, maybe they're competitors, but it just didn't seem like, I don't know, the relationship was a bit off. Uh, for me, maybe in the books, uh, the relationship was um, different, um, but I don't know, it just seemed like a character that appeared out of nowhere, and then, like, he was super important, um, but, um, oh, and the dance is cool, too. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we're going to order the phoenix. Okay. So I'm a little bit conflicted on this one. Um, I'm gonna give it... A. And I'm gonna give it an A. Um, it, could, it could have been an S, but Umbridge, I could not stand her. I hate her. I don't, I, there's, um, I don't like say hate a lot, but she was really getting on my nerves a lot. And she was just an evil person and but trying to act like Miss Goody Two Shoes like get out of here you know and she was clearly had uh, a motive to take over Hogwarts because she was you now like um, saying this is not to you know um, fudge and then and then he's like hey hey go do it and then she would be upgraded every um, into the tiers of like to Hogwarts and taking over people's like trying like banish people from the grounds and it's like that scene when she was trying to get rid of Trelawney was super sad and because her character um she kind of acts like she's useless in a sense because like she's super nice um I'm not sure if useless is a particular word to use but at the moment that's the word, <laughs> the word I can think of but she's actually a really uh, powerful seer as many of you were saying in the comments and that she was the one that was talking to Dumbledore about this prophecy and um, uh, and so what and she was also part of a really powerful wizard family and so since then Dumbledore hired her on to be a teacher and teach divination um, but I liked her as a teacher. I think she was super sweet. She had some awkward moments, but I think I would love to take a class with her. I think she'd be great. <laughs> um, and also the, you know, the very end scenes of Order of the Phoenix was really, really well done. When, uh, Harry and his, well, let me back up. So we had, uh, since, you know, Umbridge was like, you know, saying no to everything and like, you can't form any groups, blah, blah, blah. Um, the people in Gryffindor were asking, you know, Harry to kind of teach them, um, to, you know, be a better wizard because they can't use magic anywhere. And Harry has, out of all his friends, has real experience into, you know, defending himself against the dark arts. And at first Harry's like, no, I don't want to. They just think I'm some sort of freak because the, you know, uh, the Daily Prophet was like saying was putting out like these puff pieces and disinformation about him and like saying you know Voldemort's not back and blah 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 and people were believing it but um people came to their senses that it was um you know fake news <laughs> and um yeah so they kind of trained together and they were in the room of requirements and um but then that kind of got ruined uh, but later on, a couple of them, they formed a group and they went to the Ministry of Magic um, to seek out the pro uh, prophecy because Harry um, got like a vision. Um, again, I'm not sure if a vision is the right word because it almost seemed like maybe Harry was seeing into the eyes of uh, Voldemort, which is, I think, maybe different than a vision. But Voldemort somehow captured Sirius and was torturing him and was uh, trying to do that to get to Harry because he needed that the prophecy, um, you know, to, you know, defeat Harry. Um, and which was super sad that we got to see that. Um, but 
And then when they went to the Ministry of Magic, they formed a little cool little group and um, kicked some major ass. Um, and then we saw like Baldrix was strange in her background um, with her, you know, um, using um, some bad curses on Neville's parents to the point where they don't really um, remember anything. They don't remember Neville and super, super sad. And, um, and that's why he has to live with his grandma. Um, but, um, they had a little cool little fight, and, uh, but then, um, when they reached the other area in Ministry Magic, and, uh, the, the Order of the Phoenix came in, and then they had the little battle, but then Bellatrix was strange, you know, pulls a fast one and kills Sirius, and it was so sad, because it's like, we just got to know Sirius, like, in the third movie, we barely had any lines in the fourth movie, the fifth movie rolls around. We know a little bit of inside of him, but not a lot. And so I wanted to see more of him, but then so I was really sad. Um, I was really sad watching it too, as you guys can tell. Uh, and then we saw, and then Harry was like really, really pissed. And we were like, is he gonna like kill her? Cause she, he could have. And cause um, Voldemort's like, you know the spell. And then he came out of nowhere, and then Dumbledore came in, and they had this like, like super cool battle, so epic. Um, and then you know he vanished, and then Fudge is like, "Oh, he's back!" And it's like we were trying to tell you that like the whole time. <laughs> Hello, um, you just chose not to believe it, and I think that he chose not to believe it because he, he felt like now he's compromised, and now. He might have to do bidding for Voldemort or else he's going to die. So um, so I'm giving it an A tier because it could have been an S, but Umbridge lowered it down, so blame her for that. <laughs> Next one we have Half-Blood Prince. Um, I'm going to give it... I'm giving it a B. Um, it was an overall okay, like film compared to all of them um not a lot of like really cool scenes or anything um we got to see more insight of Voldemort with um seeing from his past uh from looking at Dumbledore's memories uh which was interesting in that he also his family kind of abandoned him and uh was left in an orphanage but no one wanted to be his friend uh and so and he was like super powerful. He didn't even know it yet. Couldn't even control it. And then Dumbledore realized that he just met the most powerful wizard at the time. Well, sorry, he didn't realize until uh, then that he um, met one of the most powerful wizards of all time when he said, "Oh, I can speak to snakes." And with when you can speak to snakes, it's like part of like the Salgar Slytherin um, traits. And so, and he was a super powerful wizard, right? So, and he, and so he was trying to get some memories to try to figure out what is Voldemort's weakness. And that's why he hired Slughorn to come to Hogwarts for Harry to be friends with him because Slughorn kind of collects really uh, memorable or powerful or famous wizards because he has a collection on his wall. Um, and then he tampered with one of the memories, and then Harry had to get the real one, and it ended up being Horcruxes. Um, and the reason why Slughorn was, you know, tampered with the mem with the memory because he felt ashamed of explaining what Horcrux is to uh, Voldemort. But at the same time, I feel like he would have known how to do it anyways later on. Maybe not at the particular time, but I think he would, you know... Uh, figured it out and that it was like splitting your soul and, and putting your soul into a, an object um, so then um, you wouldn't die you'd have immorality and which was super crazy and then I was thinking like hmm well here he kind of oh and then sorry um, so then they went to find the locket and the locket uh, was um, a fake one because R.E.B., which we find later on being Regulus Articulus Black, he got um, 
uh, the real locket and found out his secrets. Um, and you guys gave me some backstory about that and him being a Death Eater and then, you know, um, uh, creature going back there and um, putting a fake one in there so Voldemort wouldn't know. And all that fun stuff. And, you know, and that the one cool scene was, you know, uh, like Dumbledore using that big fire spell to get rid of those in fair eyes. Um, which was super cool. Also, just super sad with um, Snape having to kill Dumbledore. But then we found out that it was already kind of arranged because Dumbledore, you know, is a smart wizard. And he found out, you know, that uh, Draco has been ordered to kill Dumbledore for being, you know, part of the Death Eater Club. And, um, but then if he fails, he's going to turn to Severus and to make Severus very trustworthy in Voldemort's eyes, he would have to kill Dumbledore if Draco wasn't going to. And they both knew that Draco wasn't going to do that. Um, additionally, when saying that, he, Severus Snape, made an unbreakable vow with Narcissa Malfoy to make sure he would help her, sorry, help Draco with, um, accomplishing the Dark Lord's um, wishes, um, but then th it was prearranged and we found that out later, but at the time it was super sad and I was like, Severus, Dave, what are you doing? <laughs> we thought you were good at that time and later on we're like, hey, we'll take that back. You're, you're a good guy. Um, um, and also him being the ha Half-Blood Prince, because Harry got this potion book and it had all like the names in it, uh, well not names, but it had uh, different instructions on how to actually make these potions and because, you know, Snape, Snape was a really good potion um, expert and that was pretty cool. Um, okay, so we have, sorry, excuse me, uh, we have Deathly Hollows Part 1. Hmm. I'm also going to give it a B. Like, it was cool, but I also thought there wasn't, like, any, like, cool, like, magic -y action, you know? Like, what we what we want from Harry uh, Potter movies. Um, they were searching a lot of Horcruxes, and they couldn't figure out how to destroy it um, for a, a part of the movie. Um, and, um, until they figured out that in Dumbledore's um, you know, um, well, he gave them items that they would find useful in finding Horcruxes, and they kind of put that together, and which was you know cool. Uh, and they figured out you know that Basil's Fang uh, destroys a Horcrux, and that Hermione's like, you did that in Chamber of Secrets, and I was like, oh my goodness, yes you did, and so there that's why he. That Dumbledore was giving um, that to Harry, the Godric Gryffindor sword, to destroy it. But then it was like, you can't give it to him because it can belong to any Gryffindor that is willing to seek it or some BS like that. Um, pretty ballsy of them to go into the Ministry of Magic when they're all wanted and, uh, you know, trying to get the locket. Um, but, you know, they succeeded. Um, the, um, also we kind of found out more, like, insight that you guys were, that were also were saying to me that if you watch Fantastic Beasts, you'll get more insight into, you know, Grindelwald, because he wasn't really brought up until then, I th in the movies that I remember, um, and he was a super powerful wizard, um, uh, just like Voldemort and, um, and Dumbledore in his prime time. And he possessed the Elder Wand, and in saying the Elder Wand, um, you know, they went, they visited uh, Phileas Lovegood, so Luna's dad, to figure out what this symbol was, and it meant, you know, the Deathly Hollows, and that the three items mean you're the the master of death, and so that was the cloak, the Resurrection Stone, and the wand, and then the wand was hinted at for so many movies. Um, and Dumbledore was hearing it the whole time until, and we're like, oh my goodness, he had it the whole time. 
um, but then at the very end of the movie, um, he got, uh, Voldemort went to his grave and broke into his grave and took the wand. Um, and we found later that, you know, it wasn't going to work for him because he wasn't the true owner of him. Um, also super sad that Dobby died. Um, although he didn't make a lot of appearances, he was still one of my favorites. He brightened up the mood. He was super cute. Um, and, you know, it was just like, I don't know. It was, he was such a good elf, you know, like it's so nice. Um, I may be missing a little bit of Deathly Hollows. I'm just giving kind of a brief summary because it's going to be a long video. Um, yeah, and the Malfoy Manor thing was, uh, um, okay. Like, it was weird that, and we didn't really find out why Draco didn't say to Bellatrix that this is Harry, when it clearly was and he knew it was. And maybe he was just trying to defend Harry and he didn't even want to be part of this whole Death Eater, um, you know, shenanigans. <laughs> But since his parents were, he kind of has to be. But he clearly wanted no part of it. And you couldn't even tell that in, in Harry Potter's and the Half-Blood Prince. Because he was like, kept to himself the whole year. And usually he has, you know, uh, Crab and Goyle around him. And they weren't really there. And he just felt super off and super nervous. Because obviously if he doesn't succeed, Voldemort's going to kill him. And, you know, that's not good. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, so it was like, also we saw Umbridge again, so that's another thing I was like, nope, do not like this movie. Um, the other sad thing too, before I finish off, um, this Deathly Hollows Part 1 thought is, you know, um, we saw, you know, that, you know, Mad-Eye Moody died, the real Mad-Eye Moody died, which is super sad, and they knew, um, uh, their tracks because I think Snape had to tell him because he's like kind of like um it was he was a double and then he became a triple at the very end uh, agent um, and so he had to play both roles and so um, yeah lastly we have is part two Deathly Hollows definitely an S reason why I say an S it was like action combat like so much of it so good um it's what i really wanted from a harry potter film a lot of action combat uh stuff and they finally delivered it to us which is cool um a lot of the, like the mysteries uh unfolded for us and um we finally knew that you know snape was a really was a good guy he was always protecting uh, uh harry in the background even though it didn't seem like it uh, because he didn't like James Potter because you know he was built by James a lot and when they were in um, studying at Hogwarts but he uh, was in love with Lily and so he was gonna do anything to you know um, protect her or have some sort of aspect about her and that's why his Patronus was a doe you know because he loved Lily so much that he is Patronus matched Lily's which was cool um, and that we found out all the other horcruxes and that, you know, Harry thrived, he defeated Voldemort, um, the whole story wrapped up. Also, we saw Miss Weasley, uh, uh, Molly Weasley in action and she killed Bellatrix the Strange and that was so cool. Um, we also got to see a more intelligent side of Ron, um, because most of the movies, they kind of dumbed down his character. And I know that he had a lot of comedic um, aspects about him. I still think um, he needed to show some sort of, you know, intelligence behind him. Because he's one of the main characters. And he's not just some dumb person, you know. Um, also, Neville also getting a lot of um, his moments too as well. Because in the movies, he kind of seemed like this kind of nerdy, shy... Um, awkward character but then he really rised up and he you know killed uh nagini um and he destroyed that bridge which killed a lot of people <laughs> um and um you know and he really came around like i was really proud of him i was like yeah 
and the knights of uh, Hogwarts were so cool and you know McGonagall was like I've always wanted to use that spell <laughs> and um, that was so cool and that big bubble they had that was full of um, protective enchantments and then you know uh, once they destroyed the um, the cup and the Chamber of Secrets uh, Voldemort got so pissed and he just blew up that bubble. Um, I mean, it backfired a little bit because, you know, the wand was resisting him. Um, yeah, it was such a good movie. Absolutely loved it. You can even tell my reaction. I loved it. Every second of it. It was so cool. Um, also, um, when they went into Gringotts, that was cool. Very ballsy as well. And then Voldemort being super pissed that they raided Gringotts. Um, and took one of the Horcruxes, but then when that happened, um, Harry can't control seeing inside Voldemort's mind that he revealed his other, um, Horcruxes, um, besides Harry. Because I don't think he knew that Harry was a Horcrux until, um, he went back into Hogwarts and was like, um, Harry is dead! And... Please join our army or die. And then Harry jumps out of Hagrid's arms and then they start fighting. And then he realizes, what the hell? I thought you were dead. Um, but yeah, just kidding. Um, but I had a feeling that Harry would be a Horcrux um, when the story was leading up to it. Like it was very hinting at it when they were mentioning Horcruxes and then they were kind of finding it. And we found a little bit information about about it, Horcruxes and, and Six, I had an inclination that he'd be Horcrux because if he's a true Gryffindor, he wouldn't be able to talk to snakes. And so the only reason why he knew how to talk to snakes is because a part of uh, Voldemort's soul was inside him. So when that's destroyed, Voldemort is no longer with them. So I don't think he can talk to snakes anymore because his soul is destroyed, uh, which is cool. So yeah, that wraps up the tier list. I... Um, I hope y'all feel the same way. Um, I didn't put any at D because I didn't think that any of the movies deserved a D at all. Um, but yeah, these are my personal opinions about the films, but uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. And now let's move on to um, the quizzes. So I put a poll together on my YouTube and I was not expecting so much results on the poll. You guys are amazing. I absolutely love you guys. Um, and I uh, wasn't expecting the outcome. But y'all are saying that I'm a Hufflepuff. And let's just see if I am. Um, if I am a Hufflepuff, then I feel like you guys know me so well already. And we just got started. So this is going to be awesome. Um, okay. Okay, start the sorting ceremony. Um, choose one: dusk or dawn. Sorry, dawn or dusk. Um, dawn. Which the following would you most likely study? Mer people, centaurs, werewolves, vampires, goblins. Trolls, ghosts. Hmm. I feel like okay, not goblins, not trolls, um, not vampires. Hmm. Centaurs. I don't know what mer people are. Oh, mermaids. Um. I feel like I would want to discover ghosts because if I'm looking for things in the past. Um, I can do some more investigating on ghosts um, and what truly happened. If you were attending Hogwarts, which pet would you choose to take? So I have cat, toad, or owl. Hmm. I'm going to say owl because I don't like toads and I do like cats, but if I want to communicate with my family and want to know how good, you know, Hogwarts is, how they're treating me, um, I want some way of communicating that to them. So I'm going to go with Owl. 
you're attending Hogwarts, which pet would you choose to take? Okay, so we have Barn Owl, Tawny Owl, Snow Owl, Screech Owl, Brown Owl. Okay, so I'm definitely... I wouldn't take a snow a snowy owl because I don't like snow. Uh, I feel like Tawny Owl um, reminds me of Ron's dumb owl, so I wouldn't do that. Screech Owl, they're kind of like majestic looking. Um, yeah, I'll do that one. Uh, once every century, the flutter by a bush produces flowers that adapt their scent to attract the unwary. If it lured you, it would smell of the sea, a uh, home, a crackling log fire, fresh parchment. Hmm. So, um, I don't like, <laughs> this is going to surprise people, but I don't like, um, you know, bonfire smell. Like, after... Um, like it's on your clothes. I don't like it. Like, I don't like the smell of it. Um, the sea. Uh, um, I'm going to say the ocean. I like the smell of ocean and the sea. Like, it's just a, a refreshing smell to it. Uh, how would you like to be known to history? The great, the wise, the bold, the good. Hmm. Um. I would... Th the great. I think... I want to be known for great things, you know? Like, that... Like, for me, I want to be known as a great, you know, entertainer um, um, and did all I could. Like, I'm, I've taught personality that I would, I want to put out, say, example for YouTube. I want to put out videos um, that are of high quality um, and that, um, that are decent. You know, they're not like, you know, over the top and, you know, like in your face. But they have um, a sense of entertainment value to people and people feel comfort to it. And they just, and I'm um, great at my craft of, you know, making people happy and entertaining. And um, I think that's a, and um, that's for me anyways. <laughs> okay. Late at night, walking alone down the street, you hear a particular cry that, that you believe ha to have a magical source. Do you draw your wand and stand your ground? Withdrawn into the shadows to await developments, um, while mentally reviewing the most appropriate defensive uh, offensive spells should you um should trouble occur um sorry withdrawal into the shadows to wait developments while mentally reviewing the most appropriate uh, appropriate defensive and offensive spells should trouble occur um draw uh draw your wand and try to discover the source of the noise proceed with caution keeping one hand on your concealed wand and an eye out for any disturbance Hmm, so I like that one. Uh, I like that one. Draw your wand t t and try to discover the source of noise. This one takes too long. Like, um, and, um, yeah, I like this one the most. Draw your wand and stand your ground. Okay. A troll has gone berserk in the headmaster's study at Hogwarts. It's about to smash, crush, and tear several irreplaceable items and treasures. In which order would you rescue these objects from the Trolls Club if you could? Um, a near perfect cure for dragon pox. Um, so what's... Um, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm going to say three. Um... Study records going back to 100 years. I think that'd be one. Yeah. And then that one's more important because that's like history, you know? If that's destroyed, then history is destroyed. Uh, mysterious handwritten book full of strange runes. Uh, yeah. That could be useful within, uh, 
in conjunction, you know, with the history. Um, first, uh, first student records going back to 100 years, yeah. Heads or tails? Um, heads. Okay, Sorting Hat has made a decision. Drum roll, please! Okay, so we're gonna do... continue. So, uh, if y'all said Hufflepuff, I'm gonna be so proud of you. But, you know, the people that did Gryffindor, you know, love you too. Um, but if anyone says Slyther Slytherin, y'all are just trolling, you know, because I would can never be a Slytherin. I'M A RAVENCLAW! What? What is this? Okay, so you probably know that some of Ravenclaw's most renowned members include Kilderoy Lockhart and Luna Lovegood. But you, did you know Ravenclaw's Grey Lady is the least talkative Hogwarts house ghost? Or that Ravenclaw's common room uh, boasts the most stunning views of the castle grounds? Um, seriously? Hmm. This is rigged. <laughs> um, I'm I'm shocked. I thought it would be I would I thought it would it be Hufflepuff or Gryffindor. But you know, um, I guess we all don't get what we wish for. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do um, discover your wand. Okay. Uh, first of all, would you describe yourself as average height, tall, or short? Um, Average height. In your eyes, um, I am dark brown. Mm. Actually, no. Um, brown, sorry. Was the day on which you were born an odd or even number? An odd number? Do you most pride yourself on your determination, imagination, resilience, intelligence, kindness, optimism? Um, originality. Uh, like, uh, yeah, I pride myself on resilience. I don't like giving up on anything and just being really tenacious. I'm also, I pride myself also on intelligence and kindness, imagination, uh, basically all of them, but I feel like resilience can also be part of all those things. Like, if I Put, put like if you're determined to do something like I know I am, I will make it work. Um, traveling alone down desert road, you reach the crossroad. Do you left? Do you continue left towards the sea, right towards the castle, or head towards the forest? Um, probably towards the castle. <laughs> Do you fear most? Um, fire, darkness, isolation, heights, small spaces. Um, small spaces. Okay. And a uh, chest of magical artifacts. Which would you choose? Um, silver dagger, orient mirror, glittering jewel. Uh, bound scroll, black glove, dusty bottle, or golden key. Hmm. I'm gonna go with glittering jewels. Okay. Why is it not loading? My wand would be maple wood with a phoenix feather core, 11 and 3 quarters, and supply flexibility. That's cool. I have phoenix uh, on it, so that's cool. And discover your Patronus. The 
Patronus is a kind of positive force, projection of the very things that the Dementor feeds upon, hope, happiness, and the desire to survive. St. Bernard. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I sincerely appreciate it and I'll see everyone in the next video. Peace out. Bye.